Hi, Chaba here from Game of Conversions and welcome to another day of proven ad breakdowns. This is actually day eight, so we're starting a new week here. And today I wanted to do something really special because I'm breaking down Gary Bensevenga's famous Kuro Buddha ham ad. So if you're wondering, this is a an ad for a special type of ham, which is also called the Kobe beef of pork, basically. And uh, this ad was so effective that a lot of people ended up spend, uh, sending Gary some letters just saying like, how can you make something so effective? And today we're gonna see how this uh, copy is at least as silky smooth as the ham itself. It's really special. Uh, it's not too salesy at all uh, and it's not too long. Uh, considering it's a it's a full blown sales letter, but uh, I'll just show you what this whole thing is about. So let's jump into the video itself. So uh, the first thing we can notice is that uh, this is kind of like I wouldn't say it's necessarily a direct lead, but we start with the name of the product itself. Itself. So we start with Kuro Buddha, the red hot foodie obsession becomes the greatest holiday ham I've ever tasted outrageously juicy, flavorful, and melt in your mouth tender. So it starts with the kind of like the product name itself, but this isn't necessarily a product. It's like a unique type of whole new category of, of ham. So um, that's why I think it's uh, it's easy to get away with it because it just creates curiosity. Like what what is this whole thing that has so many benefits to it? Uh, and also, this presupposes that this is something already, it's something that's already very popular because it's an obsession. And, you know, Gary Ben Sevenga was huge on proof marketing. So this piece, this sales letter is definitely a shining example of providing uh, a lot of proof. Yes, you also give uh, like big promises and this sales letter, this whole headline is basically it's a huge promise. It's like the greatest holiday ham I've ever tasted, but it's written in a testimonial style format and everything here is just quotes. So it's basically like a testimonial. Um, the other big thing is that um, we have the theme of holidays here. And this is important because the whole promotion was running before the holidays. So there was something natural. Uh, there was a natural urgency and uh, and scarcity element to the things because if you want to enjoy an, an amazing family time uh, during this holiday, eating something that everybody will be raving about, then you have to buy this ham, but you have to buy it quickly because stocks are limited and you know you don't have all the time that you want to uh, to really get this ham. The other thing I would like you to notice immediately, and this is this is true throughout the whole sales letter, is that there are amazing visual words that create tons of desire. So not many people are able to use evocative word, words like juicy, flavorful, and, and melt in your mouth tender. So I immediately start almost salivating. And this is kind of like an NLP, a neuro linguistic programming technique in which you you really show and describe everything visually and, and in an auditive way or even uh, like as if you were touching it. Uh, but this is very, very visual, very uh, it's it appeals to our core emotions as as basically carnivores or ex carnivores. And most people in the world like these types of hams uh, and this was is this ad was specifically aimed at Americans who love their ham especially around the holidays and although we're talking about hams here by the way the number one core benefit that this whole product gives people is uh, being perceived as someone caring and smart and unique uh, during a family dinner so instead of fighting your uh, you know uh, on the holidays or something, we have this mechanism, this this vehicle in the product of a ham, which brings people together and creates a lot of amazement and uh, makes you, the host, or the person who prepares the ham look like uh, a genius, like someone who has extraordinary culinary taste, who knows, you know, other cultures. And it's just, it appeals to our inner, like, 
willingness and, and, and desire to appease others and to, and to feel like something really special. So that's the, na- the number one benefit that I think that this whole ad uh, aims at. It's not the ham, the ham is just a delivery vehicle, but it's still uh, sold in a, in, a, in a genius way. We also have, like we, we are introduced to immediate scarcity, as I said before. Uh, so we have a sub sub headline which says large and small hams sold out. So it's like this immediately creates a kind of uh, fear in people that they don't even know what this whole thing is about yet. They just know it's something super, super nice, uh, but it's already almost over or they, they've already missed it almost. Uh, so that's why they have to read it. Um, there's a bunch of notes, by the way, so maybe I won't be able to cover everything, but uh, we have a bunch of highly exclusive elements throughout the copy. So it's like tiny handful you, you know, of Americans will only be able to savor this. So again, if you want to be uh, the elite, the initiated who knows how this super uh, nice tasting ham really is in real life, and you don't just want to imagine it, you want to taste it and you want to show it to your family, then you really have to act now. You really have to read this promotion because otherwise you'll be left out. You'll be just an average Joe, a schmuck who has regular ham, you know, and uh, you won't be perceived as the savior of the day. That's what this whole thing is about. Uh, and we all know that amazing food is, is extra important during the holidays. Um, and people want to be perceived as good hosts uh, so they they have to get this ham by Tuesday December 11 2007 otherwise they miss out so we start the main sales letter by setting expectations and future pacing this is a common thing that we noticed before in the past as well so it says dear ham lover if you're a lover of great ham prepare to have your life changed again it just sets expectations and creates it's 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 a unique promise it's a bold promise but we have proof elements, for example, all throughout the copy. And as you can notice, the whole right um, uh, part here is made up of testimonials all throughout the copy, only testimonials, testimonials, and very smart testimonials as well, because they answer uh, various objections that people might have around around uh, this ham or around the process of, you know, having ham for dinner, or there's, there's just a lot of, um, visceral memories that are shared in these testimonials that really make it sound uh, very, very credible, which I really like. So we have a lot of proof elements, like immediately uh, we talk about chefs like Thomas Keller, who must be some important chef. Uh, Foodies everywhere are are hailing Kurobuda as the Kobe beef of pork. Uh, If you're not familiar with steaks, you know, Kobe beef is one of the most expensive types of steak in the world. It's like one kilo costs at least like a hundred dollars or something depending on quality it has very very fine marbling and most people um, especially in the market in the target audience that we're aiming this at they're kind of familiar with this type of uh, thing uh, with maybe Kobe beef they've heard about it before and they know that it's kind of something that's unreachable that's something very very expensive and they can't really afford it Uh, but now's the chance to get something almost as good or very, very similar at probably a much lower price. It's just in a ham form. So we immediately get introduced to the market opportunity itself that no one was creating ham from Kurobuda before. Uh, And we have promise. We always have, and this is Gary's specific style, that we have a uh, promise and then we have a proof that backs it up. Promise, proof, promise, proof all the time, because this is what elevates our emotions. It makes us, uh, you know, interested in what's what's uh, the uh, the copywriter or the offer itself is promoting, but it makes it very, very believable. Uh, and this is really important, especially nowadays when there are so many snake oil salesmen and people just don't know what to get anymore because there's so many overhyped promises without any proof. So pretty soon we get, uh, this is kind of the lead of the whole thing. And we get into the start of the story, which, which is kind of like a, a discovery j- journey that the writer itself is inviting me as the reader on so it's kind of like an odyssey it's kind of like come join me on this epic tale of me discovering something unique this is the whole um 
the whole premise of the story here. And he goes on to say that, you know, a few years ago, uh, he's an expert. And again, we have a lot of proof elements here, like comprehensive ham tasting, you know, and it was featured in his publication and whatnot. Uh, and then basically the story goes that, you know, uh, this guy uh, wanted to, uh, the guru that Gary's, Gary Bensavanga is writing the ad for, uh, wanted to set out to basically discover the best pork and, and, and the best ham in the world. Uh, and he was disappointed because uh, he was trying everything but, but, but couldn't really find it. Uh, and then he wanted to find the best. And this, again, presupposes that he wants to give you, as, as the reader, the best as well. Uh, so he couldn't find a single ham that satisfied me on every count, you know, and um, basically this whole part just, just described how there was no solution to this problem. He, he was searching, you know, for the perfect ham, the platonic ham, but, uh, but nothing. And then, you know, uh, the copy becomes educative and it sets us all up for the unique mechanism of, of the problem and the solution. So in case you don't know, uh, we always need a unique mechanism or a unique selling proposition, which is kind of similar uh, in, in any copy, especially nowadays, because people are just asking, why should I choose you over anybody else or over doing nothing at all? So why should I chose, choose this ham instead of buying any other ham from the grocery store or or instead of just not having ham at all, uh, having something vegetarian or something. Uh, so you really, really have to separate and differentiate your product. Otherwise, it's just gonna be a dime a dozen. And I really like how uh, uni we, we set up the uh, unique mechanism of the problem first. So it goes something like this. Somebody had to do something because American pork producers in the 1990s had moved en masse to produce a leaner, drier, and far less flavor for pork they marketed as the other white meat so the copy is ed educative we we find out that you know uh, probably market demand has shifted pork producers from from selling uh, high fat pork because you know uh, back in those days all the rage was about you know fat is making you fat which we now now know that it's not the case at all but like in those days this was the uh, dominant and um, popular uh, dietary belief so that people and companies started responding to this demand by uh, creating uh, more, uh, I mean, less flavorful, but leaner type of pork. And white meat, you know, they wanted to uh, position it more like chicken and fish probably as, as something like more more healthy. But a pork lover like, uh, like uh, the person we have, David, uh, was basically appelled from this whole thing and he wanted to uh <clears throat> he wanted to find uh, a ham that really has it all and i really like this paragraph it's i think it's a masterpiece of a paragraph it says at the uh, at the head of the new full flavored heritage piggyback uh, is a japanese breed of pig called kurobuta which after being enthusiastically embraced by tough chefs like thomas keller of the french laundry has become one of the hottest foodie obsessions according to bon appetit magazine Many say that Kurobuta pork is, is to regular pork as Kobe beef is to regular steak. So again, we have proof, we have promise, we have nice analogies and, and, uh, and uh, comparisons. Once again, uh, I think this, this paragraph just has it all. And then we continue with the story and we get introduced kind of like to the unique mechanism of solution. So flash, a light bulb, light bulb pops up in my head. The one thing I haven't seen, however, was Kurobuta ham. So even though, you know, uh, there was Kurobuta pork, there was no ham. So this is like the big uh, market opportunity here that he's trying to um, satisfy. And he's also describing the whole process so that the whole process becomes um, credible, interesting, and it sucks people in, which is pretty cool. Uh, and we, we even have things like over delivering on a promise, but but the, Gary can get away with it because he has so much, so many proof elements that he can say stuff like, "Would I not have? Uh, would I not then have on my hands the ham of hams, the hyper ham, the greatest ham story ever told, the greatest ham what am?" Uh, so it's it's a it's a very playful thing, and it probably makes people smile a bit. Uh, but he can get get away with it because he has so many proof elements, proof elements everywhere. Um, 
Then he goes on to say that the product basically has been validated in the past. So this ham was already uh, tried by uh, his past readers, a very exclusive number of people. But now, you know, you as the reader has the opportunity, have the opportunity um, to to also, you know, get a, get a piece of this. And we have even more very credible testimonials. They're all focused around various objections that people have. Uh, and they also have very evocative NLP words. So we, we have a bunch of things like the texture was velvety, the flavor sublime. One of my guests observed, the meat just melts in your mouth. I want to do it again next year. Um, please. So it's it's credible and it's like it, it, it creates a bunch of desire in people. So it's very, very hard to do credibility elements and proof elements, which also create a lot of desire. But Gary managed to pull this off. So it's no wonder that he's considered the best copywriter, uh, living copywriter um, at the moment. So that's that's really saying something. Then we have more like future pacing elephant, uh, uh, elements and um, we get introduced more to the uh, unique mechanism of the solution that I mentioned before. Before, this is a very educative ad. Again, he goes on to describe, you know, what's actually inside the Kuro Buddha pork, like how how it's made, like what's so special about it, why is it so so superior. So he even explicitly, preemptively answers an objection and uh, and. Uh, positions this whole thing as the unique selling proposition of the of the whole ad. Um, so we have even more promises. So you never get a fatty, greasy taste when eating pork. We know that this is probably important for the target audience here. Instead, the, the real distinction of Koro Buddha pork is a shorter, rounder mustard fiber, fiber, which incredibly leads to a much higher retention of moisture in the meat. So again, it's just this is also called reason why copy in a sense. And this is also one of Gary uh, Bansavenga's specialties because he goes into explaining how the mechanism itself works, why it's so good, the reason why this ham is really, really special. Uh, and this, again, creates uh, rapport with people. It makes it seem believable and, and, and achievable and valuable and uh, all these things that are needed to really hype up uh, an ordinary product, let's say, because yes, it's it's a special type of ham, but at the end of the day, it's still a ham. But by describing how special it is, people, you know, build desire for it, and then ultimately, it's it will be much easier to sell them on on this whole family uh, experience that nobody will be able to forget about. This is what we're selling. So uh, we have nice comparisons everywhere, like. You know, as in slow growing grapes, you know, we have more flavor, we have more proof elements, we have once again, here's the big opportunity. So no one has offered this ham before. Uh, so I'm going to be the first and you're going to be one of the first to uh, to have a taste of it. Um, again, why is this ham so special? Just you know, very transparent and honest, describes the entire process while we're having even more uh, testimonials here. Um, I only want to give you the best. This is the whole message of the thing that I only want to give you the best. And um, one of the testimonials I really liked is that it's a bit similar to Blue Blockers. And Blue Blockers is the uh, famous ad by uh, Joe Sugarman that I analyzed before. So I now know how ham is supposed to taste. This is also kind of like, I can't believe my senses until I try this whole thing. Uh, it just creates, it just sucks people in even more. Now, there's an improvement opportunity that I think, you know, nowadays if you were to try this ad, it probably won't work so much. Uh, it, it could still work. I mean, it would still be better than most e-commerce companies, definitely, infinitely better. But, you know, it says that in my name raised on traditional corn and soybeans to uh, an Idaho smokehouse. So, you know, nowadays it's not so... Uh, um, it's not so it's visible to advertise your product eating corn and soybeans because people want to shift away from these these uh, uh, big crops that you know everyone everyone's putting in everything they want grass fed grass finished uh, meat and uh, they want something which is more uh, organic and obviously this is also probably organic and uh, uh, you know it 
later on it highlights how you know this these these animals are like pasture raised and something like that but um but it's it's not enough emphasis on that so nowadays you probably should spend more day more uh, emphasis on uh, really highlighting how good of a life these animals have why i don't know they're less stressed so their their hormone balance is different so that they, their meat tastes even better or something like that uh or i think with kobe beef they eat like olive oils or, or olive olive uh, olives or something i don't know exactly but but something like that they eat something really special and that's also what uh is the reason why behind they're so uh expensive um also we have some stuff like uh, this 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 subhead is a little bit weird to me so oodles of rich juice see the from this ham so maybe this is a typo or something or i'm just not getting it but i don't know this is weird um we have this this I, I'm not gonna read it right now, but I, I, I invite you to to read this these three paragraphs because it's 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 an amazing example of how to describe something, uh, how to use evocative words and just create tons of desire here. Um, we have also next to this amazing part, we have an amazing testimonial. Like check this out, like how credible it is. I don't like ham and only serve it when I have been pressured into it by my family. So we already start with a very skeptical person. It's always rubbery, dry, and tasteless. My dad is the one who saw your Kuro Buddha ham offer. Uh, he's also a ham lover and decided to take the plunge. And I am so happy he did. I now know how ham is supposed to taste. It was beautiful, moist, tender, and flavorful. I served it over the holidays at our family celebration. The ham was the best we've ever tasted. It's all we talk about for days. So it's just so credible. Uh, it's it's a perfect testimonial. We have, um, we have um, finally a mention of the number one uh, desire that we're aiming at, leaves your guests in awe. So that's what this whole thing is about, to look good in front of others. Uh, and this ham is basically just the vessel to get there. So we have some preemptive objection handling here, uh, m multiple times actually, because we're um, we're answering the objection the objection of, but what if you know there's gonna be a lot of leftovers? Uh, and that's why you know we have two sizes for the ham, so it, it immediately follows. It's it says comes in two sizes. <coughs> which is kind of a which versus if question that I like. So in this part people won't be um, deciding between whether to get the ham or not get the ham but they'll be deciding between which one to get the half ham or the whole ham um, and again we have more uh, objection handling and unique selling proposition things like unlike mass-produced factory hams that are virtually identical these are artisanal hams so these are really special unique and you'll also be unique if you buy one um, we have even more objection handling. Uh, and once again, the ad is super helpful because Gary even goes to uh, mention that there's going to be some recipes that he sends along with this ham because uh, probably one of the big pain points of the target audience is what happens if there's a lot of leftovers? Like, what do we do with that? Do, do we just throw it out? Do we give it to the dog? Do we, uh, like, how, how should we prepare it so that it's, it's still... Uh, like wanted and desire building. So uh, Gary may, goes goes an extra mile to also include a probably a cookbook or or like a recipe list of all the things that people can uh, can do with with the leftovers and they're quite creative things. So also still it's educative how to serve the perfect ham you know and i like this part because it future paces it's uh, it sends the message of you've already bought so here's what's next so uh when whether you order the half or the whole ham so this again presupposes that you buy the ham your decision is just between the the the, the half one or the whole one i'll be sure to throw in my specific instructions bring on those leftovers again the major objection that i that i mentioned here uh we have an another uh amazing testimonial uh here are actually some good ideas for leftovers so you can make a sandwich or like ham fennel and potato uh, grated southern style ham biscuits brie and smoked ham on sourdough uh fishel maybe i'm butchering this but yeah some something really really 
like it, it, it sounds delicious and now we have some scarcity because at this point people are, are probably already sold on the idea of this whole ham we've introduced them to the problem and the unique mechanism of the problem and the solution as well we've described how this is different we've built a lot of trust but now we have to knock him off the fence with a little bit of uh, urgency and scarcity and the whole christmas thing just lends itself beautifully to, the, to this to this thing because there's a reason why behind the scarcity and urgency. It doesn't seem fake, and this is really important in your own promotions as well. So, um, and I like this 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 paragraph here. It says, if you want to serve something truly extraordinary this holiday season, and then let your family and yourself enjoy the most heavenly leftovers for many days to come, I urge you to place your order now. So again, to me, this this means that instead of in like what happens most families unfortunately instead of fighting amazing family time together that will be the result and everyone will be grateful to you the buyer or the one who prepares the ham itself so uh you'll be the hero and everybody wants to be the hero so he, this is the place where we have the cta box this is just a sign off form and uh, in the ps we have a, a no risk money back guarantee so it's uh Actually, this is one of the improvement opportunities that I that I would probably do in a in a newer version of this offer. I would probably test it to have a more um, have a more irresistible type of offer. Like there's there's a specific offer structure that you do, uh, which is kind of like cutting edge nowadays, in which you know you anchor the price to something else. Uh, you uh, add on bonuses, you layer on proof elements, you, there's a specific way on how to uh, like lower the price and to, um, to uh, mention the guarantee. And it's not always needed. Uh, probably it's not really needed for this one, but I would definitely test it to see, to Im improve that because nowadays, uh, people are even more skeptical and, um, you really have to go the extra mile as well to differentiate your product. So at the end, you know, um, we just have enough knock them off the fence element because it says yes it can be very expensive to ship a 17 to 20 pound ham but we've negotiated a far more attractive deal for shipping your ham right to the door so again it's just if you are interested in this you're sold at this point and you just give an extra kind of bonus in a sense of you have not free shipping but like almost free shipping or, or much better shipping rates. And then we have another urgency reminder and some NLP language, you know, benefits once again at the beginning, because this is what people will remember as the last part. So tender as you will taste for yourself. So yeah, uh, I, I really encourage you to read this whole promotion from beginning to end because it's just buttery smooth. And it's, you know, the, the, the cool thing about this is that it doesn't sound, it doesn't seem like, like, uh, deliberately powerful copy and that's the best type of copy it doesn't seem try hard it's it's not like you feel like the copywriter was really really trying hard to convert you or something no it seems very laid back very interesting uh credible and something that just you know holds your attention and that's the hardest type of copy uh, to write and uh, that's why Gary was so uh, advanced in this regard because it takes a lot of effort to really uh, narrow down your whole uh, sales message so that it's consistent and there's no fluff in this whole thing it's just exactly how much you want to say exactly how you want to say it so that people actually take you up on the offer so uh, thank you so much for watching this video if you're still watching this then leave a like below because that really helps these videos rank higher and reach more people uh, and if you found it helpful also consider sharing it with other people in your team or a friend or someone who's interested in these types of things and also leave a comment below and let me know your number one uh, the number one thing that you learned from this uh, ad, I'm really curious because there's so many things going on here and I'm just a big, uh, big uh, fan of Gary Bansvenga and I really want to know like what connected with you the most. So thanks again for watching and see you tomorrow.